I've been a teacher for a few years now, and in that time I've noticed something. Teachers are always sick. And part of that is the obvious, right? Kids are disgusting vessels of disease. But the real reason why teachers get sick so often is actually a bit more complex. All right, we'll start right there though. Kids have terrible hygiene, and you ask any elementary school teacher their war stories and just like prepare to be horrified. I've seen kids sneeze directly into their teacher's open mouths before. Like, I'll just, I'll call you a substitute right now. How's that? Those airborne diseases are pretty easy to spot. Those are the ones that travel through the air, like with coughing or sneezing. But transmission can also be spread to teachers through touching surfaces like desks or computer keyboards, things that are just covered in germs. Back in 2009, research published in the Journal of School Nursing showed that literally every classroom the researchers tested had measurable amounts of the influenza virus in it, with some surfaces harboring bacteria and viruses better than others. Surfaces like sink handles or paper towel dispensers or keyboards Words, especially if they were shared, were the grimiest. That same research team went a little bit further. They wanted to see if wiping down the student's desk at the end of the day would make any difference in whether the kids got sick. And sure enough, cleaner desks meant fewer sick days for the kiddos. So from workplace exposure alone, teachers already up the chance of getting sick. Now, you're probably thinking, ugh, Patrick, we already know that classrooms are disgusting cesspools of filth and grime. The thing is, while teachers are always gonna be exposed to germs, they're actually more susceptible to get sick from those germs because of this phenomenon that happens between the immune system and stress. When you first get stressed, you activate your fight or flight response. It's the same mechanism that makes your heart race during a scary movie. And that response triggers the release of a bunch of different hormones, one of which is cortisol, otherwise known as the stress hormone. And that sudden bump in cortisol will sound an alarm in your immune system, signaling for a shift from this all over generic, what's called cell mediated immunity to a more specific and localized version called humoral immunity. Researchers don't totally know why this happens, but it might be an effort by your body to survive the stressful situation and deal with the sickness later. Like while it definitely sucks to get sick over Thanksgiving break, at least you made it through report cards, which definitely counts as a stressful situation. Now that shift from cell mediated to humoral immunity happens pretty slowly and it lasts for as long as that stress level and those cortisol levels are elevated. But once that stressful event is over and those cortisol levels return back to normal, the immune system actually backs off a little too much. And with the ever-present swarm of germs from feral children, you're gonna be exposed to something. This phenomenon isn't something that's unique to teachers, but that school schedule definitely predisposes us to it. You'll have weeks of mounting stress and then a few days of relief, which gives your body plenty of time to back off the immune system. And if this thing sounds familiar, I actually wrote a SciShow with a very similar theme, which you can check out in this linked video right there. So then teachers totally take better care of themselves because they have to compensate for all the germs they're exposed to, right? Yeah, about that. While teachers tell their students about how important sleep and eating healthy is, they don't actually do it themselves. A study from Ball State University in 2008 reported that 43% of teachers get less than six hours of sleep per night and the vast majority of teachers don't feel well rested during the school day. And when you don't get enough sleep or you don't get high quality sleep, your immune system suffers. And all of this, the lack of sleep, stressing ourselves sick, and the high exposure to germs is just a perfect storm for sickness. But hey, I like hanging out with kids and talking about science, so in the end, it's worth it. Now, I wanna hear from you all. What is the grossest way that you've ever gotten sick? Like, I wanna hear your gnarliest stories down in the comment section. Otherwise, I appreciate it if you like the video and subscribe if you wanna see more of my videos. Have fun, be good, and I will see you next time.